So I'm doing a story about the Camino de Santiago. This is my first trip with my daughters. What a great time. We had such a great time. This, when I come home, I, I hang my shell up. When I go back on the walk, I pull that shell back off and I continue to walk. But that's where it stays at my front door. Have you ever seen those door knockers in Portugal? I made uh, this in one of their soccer balls. Actually, this thing is heavy. And uh, I bought one at a hardware store and packed it with me in my backpack. But that's my front doorbell. I painted it. It was great. It's my front yard. The Camino. See, I made a Camino brick stone. Yep, I'm hooked. Here's my stamp collection. So, every stamp has a story. I don't go for the stamp on the chain. I don't go for the woman in the booth. I search out the father or the nun or the priests that have their own stamps and they are most times different. Um, at the first part of the Lisboa to, I'd say, past Fatima, there are no stamps. They don't. They're kind of just starting out, and I'm kind of glad because it's kind of awkward if they you say, hey, where's the church? And they take you there and say, they wait for you to pray, but really what you, you're looking for is a stamp kind of to take a look at their church. They, you know, it's when, especially when you're used to stamp collecting, right? Um, yeah, each one, I've had great stories, but I do two different ones. I do a, an Albergue stamps book, and I do a church stamp book. Because they mean separate things to me. One is about the community of the Camino. One's about the spiritual side for me. That's um, obviously I'm hooked with this whole thing. That's only part of it. Here's my. Um, each one of us have a string in my family. I'm the white string. My, my son Brandon's the black string. Kylie's the orange string, and Taylor's the red string. And when we walk it. We run our strings. This is the, the map of Portugal and Spain. Um, this time I'm going to Centurium to get a, uh, a tattoo. I get them some kind of marking every time I go on the Camino. There's that. So, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty much a lifer on this whole Camino thing. Um, this time I'm flying into Barates. Last time we trained, the difference was seven hours and an hour and a half. So that puts me at noon on the coast of, of France, drinking a glass of wine, which I think is pretty cool. The first part of the journey is like walking up a cliff. There's where we start, down the bottom. These are elevations. And you end up in Rosalales. So, this part of the, the Camino I enjoy doing. I'm going to start early over the Pyrenees Mountains this time. Um, it was cold last time. We were like in almost winter gear coming over. We looked, we were all puffed up in our winter gear. Because it was like um, early spring. And then... Uh, the exact opposite. Here we all are arrogant in Lisboa. Oh, we've done the Camino. We're all pros. And then we got stuck in a desert. It was kind of miserable at first. Then it got better. This is a road trip we did to see Frank Carter and the rattlesnakes. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but boy, they're fantastic. Yes, I like that band too. That's Frank Carter and the rattlesnakes. So my my journey begins again. In June, I'm walking from St. Jean Pier de Port. About this point, right in time, I'm going to evaluate what kind of time I got, how long it take me to get there. I get till August 2nd to jump on to be in Madrid.
because on the 3rd, I fly to Iceland, which is right now way up there. Um, so I have to either train or bus to Madrid. So I want to do a lot of things, so I have to be really organized. There are parts, since I have walked most all of it, I'm probably going to miss the middle. I'm not going to do the last 110K because the great bed race is just not for me. Um, I'd rather figure out a way to get down and do the Portuguese Camino starting at Porto. But then I'm going to bust down and get, like I said, get that. I eat, breathe, and sleep this this journey, and I tell everyone I can that you need to do it. And I think you could do it inexpensively. I think it is for everyone. I think it would really help our country is if we had some, you know, some way of putting lost people on this route. There was a story of a man that was going to commit suicide on our first trip, and his life was changed. His family was dead. He was on a bridge, and Police talked him down, gave him some boots, 200 euros, and set him on the path. And he came back just happy, with flowers in his hair. And he was going to walk to Israel after, because he walked it and he's walking back. Oh, I usually take some kind of protector for my, um, my Compostela. It's kind of funny because on the way there was this really nice man. And he, my daughters are probably better than mine. But he's stamped with a little shoe. With a stamp book. And this guy in town caught him. And he says, I don't know what you're, you know, this is all in Spanish. I don't know what you're selling, but you're, this is a holy walk. And so the guy kind of cleaned up his stuff and took off. But he had a pretty good stamp. Um, this is kind of my tracking. So I can organize each time I go. So I don't want to just haphazardly do this. I want to be semi-organized. This is my way of doing it. Everyone has their own way. My backpack's almost finished. I don't have to worry about that. Um, I got almost all the tickets purchased. And then I take off on the 27th. And I don't come back until August 5th. So that's my Camino conversation. Buen Camino. God bless. I hope you go. It's well worth it.